Hi guys, today we're working with Windows and not the operating system, but the actual native window object that an OS provides. So what you're looking at currently is a window of the IntelliJ ID. And we're going to spawn a bunch of windows now in our app, which is going to be called Windows app. A bit ambiguous, but it will do. So instead of creating a scene or doing something that we normally do, we're actually going to create first a node, a very special type node. So what I'm thinking is um, a window or a stage has X and Y values that we can set width and height. And if you kind of look at it from afar, from distance, then it's kind of like a game object because a game object has all those properties. You can move it around in 2D space, you can um, set its dimensions and stuff like that. So how about we turn a stage into a game object and then the entire operating system becomes our game world, so to speak. Stage node, it's going to have a stage in it. I'm going to create a stage right here and we're going to show the stage show um, it's going to need some content so set scene new scene I'm going to set this as the content I think this will do because this is just like a dummy node I want to be able to set width and height uh, actually X and Y and then width and height Set size, width, there we go, set width. And then presumably set X, yeah. Yep, this will do. Um, on start, we don't show our main stage because we're going to be using our own ones. So let's just create stage node for testing purposes. Uh, let's go with 100. No, 100 is too small. Let's go with 200. Now these are uh, width and height. X and Y, 100 will do. So it's somewhere around here, I think. And so, since we're going to do animations, I'm recording at 60 FPS. We'll see if these animations are nice. Because what I'm thinking is, JavaFX has built-in animations for moving nodes. And since this thing is now a node, we should be able to move, right? Let's try that. Nice. So we can create a window slash game object at X and Y with given width and height. So what do we want to do now? Um, let's create sort of a circular arrangement around uh, the center of the screen. Let's go with that. Point, and then we'll do some animations. Uh, point to the is the center of the screen, and that's 1920 over two and 1080 over two. Now what I'm going to do here is go sort of radially around the point and at a at 30 degree angles, I think, is going to be my interval. And based on that, I should be able to obtain a vector in that direction of the angle. So it goes kind of from the center, it goes to different uh, directions. And then using that vector, I can add to the center to obtain a point in that direction, which will be the spawn point our game object slash node. Right, um, what do I want? I want a vector. Which is going to be the angles 
So this is the angle, right? Let's rename this. It's cosine of the angle. Does it take degrees or radians? Angle in radians. Okay, so we need to convert that to radians. And then we'll do the same, but this time it's sine. This gives us the vector that we can use. And then using the vector, we can obtain new point, which is center add vector. Now this is more or less a unit vector, right? Yeah, so we need to scale it, multiply by the distance. Um, let's go with 300. So it's going to be 300 from the center. It should be all right. And that new point is the center of the window. But keep in mind, JavaFX doesn't draw from the center. It draws from top left. So we need to use W and H width and height to offset um, this new point to obtain top left of the window. And that is new point, subtract width and height of the window. If we're going to use 200, then it's 100, 100. So we're subtracting half of the width and half of the height. And then use that to create this window. Top left, get X, top left, get Y. And it has to be converted to an end. Yep, that'll do. And this is width and height. Okay, let's try that. Should be arranged radially. Nice. We have a bunch of windows. Uh, and because we started from here, um, zero degrees is that way, the X axis. And then it goes like that. Yeah, it's super nice. Oh, I need to close all of them. Yeah, that's something I did not bring through. Let's just add, let's add an event handler somewhere so that when one closes, everything does. Um, set event, no, on close request. Shut down platform, which will implicitly close all the windows because I don't want to be closing that every time I run this. Nice. What's next? Let's do some animations. So we've done that. Um, let's add translation animation. And the cool thing is this is a node now because it extends parent, so I should be able to animate it. Translate transition. I'm not going, um, I'm not using FXGL, which means I don't have access to all the cool interpolators. But we'll do what JavaFX offers as built in stuff. So, new translate, a new translate transition, or does it take duration, and then the node? Yeah. Duration is going to be two seconds, maybe. So, I want them to move from where they are to the center and then back. Should create a nice animation, I think. Node is the node. Set 2x is our center point. 2y is center point at y. Uh, set repeat or hold it reverse true. So it goes to the center and then goes back to where it was. And then cycle count just many times. Play. Oh, we haven't actually changed anything here because it's going it's only going to change the translation of the of this node, but we have to listen for the changes and then move the stage. Translate add listener. No, did not mean to do that. Um, is it Alt Enter? How do you? Oh, it's Control Space. Okay. Don't worry about that. Don't care about that either. Um, this is this is X. Like new X. 
and then stage set x to this new x. Yeah, it's an int. Did same with y. So now when the node changes, the stage also should change. And unfortunately it does not. Double cannot be cast to integer. Fair enough. It's the least of our problems. Uh, one, that's cool. Two, I know where the problem is because we didn't we didn't set the from x and y, so it just goes from zero. Let me just close one of them. Now that's actually, let me close this. Okay, I'm going to do that one. Yeah. So we need the from value. From x uh, is where the thing actually is, which is that as in where it is originally and now it should do it um, no I said still cool I think yeah shut it down set from y I guess I could press alt f4 if I'm focused yeah that's quite interesting. So you're now doing animations like literally within the operating system. It's probably not as cool because you're not really doing anything low level. You're just accessing sort of high level APIs that JavaFX provides. It's still cool nonetheless. And we might even add a delay. Uh, set delay duration second 0.5. Half a second that gives us wait. wait, I don't see any delay. That's odd. Probably because windows are spawned in a um, asynchronous way, I would have thought. Interesting. Well anyway, uh, I'm gonna move on to something different. I wanna open all the windows to cover the entire screen and then translate them. It's going to be a bunch of windows. So I'll keep that somewhere. Um, how do you extract it into control alt M was it? Uh, first try and then we'll do a second try and something else refactor. Yeah we don't want to call that. Um, what else? I want to go through how many rows do I want? Well, if it's 200, if the height of the window is 200, my entire screen is 1080, so let's go with four. Should fit, and then we get this thing. Let's go with nine. Yeah, nine by 200 is. 1800 so, so that should do it so create one of these x multiplied by what well, 200 200 want different animation this time want to translate from where they are or rather Give it minus fifteen, and then use well set x. Well, x doesn't change, so I don't need that. And that's where it's going to move to. Well, the reverse cycle count, yeah. Duration delay. 
Oh, I think I know why the delay didn't work. Because we set delay to everything to be 0 0.5 seconds. What I should have done is created an offset of some sort. So if I multiply this by some kind of a X or something, that should create the right offset. Yeah. Uh, translate transition. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's going to work. That's a bunch of windows. They're animating. I don't know if they're lagging or if the animation is what I set it to be. Let's close one. Uh, let's do 50 maybe. What's the duration on this thing? Two seconds? Let's set it to one second. I want a wave looking thing almost. That's a bit better. Let's make it even quicker. Um, like this. And change that maybe, and then that. So that the offset isn't that great. Yeah, that'll do. It's not too bad. I guess you can offset the entire thing so it's so it appears closer to the center rather than from the top left. But that'll do. We've just spawned what. Four, nine, nine by four, thirty-six windows, and they're doing their own thing. That's pretty good. You can play, you can make a game with this. Like you can treat each window as a game object, and because you can set a scene and then a, an actual node in it, you can even get rid of the um, like decorations around the window, and this will give you a game object within your um, operating system environment. Like you could easily remove stage set, um, what is it, set style, init style, style transparent, undecorated, it's probably what we want, and then set scene, new scene, and then provide some kind of a, um, well, we've already set this, so why don't we just add some nodes to ourselves? Get children add new rectangle 200 200 and then color I don't know blue we probably need to find a way that to be able to shut it down then but you now have some interesting things like you can treat each of those things as a game object um, I'm not sure what's happening here because these are fine these being overlapped or something anyway you can you can figure this out but you now have the ability to work <laughs> to, to treat your operating system as all well, as if it's a game world which is pretty cool right so in this video we covered how to adapt our stage type object into a node type object by just having something that links them together. And then by changing the node, uh, the node's translation, we also change the stages translation. And that way we got kind of some kind of control over these uh, game objects in quotes. And in the next video, we'll probably try to do something old school, like doing hangman in the terminal. So stay tuned for that. And I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.